Hey everybody, thank you guys for tuning in today for one of our Back to Basics videos. We've got a pretty fun episode where we're going to be talking a lot about tire casings and helping you guys make the selection that is best for you, your terrain and riding style. A lot of tire companies out there are going to have a, a wide range of offerings from lightweight XC casing where weight and ride quality are at the utmost importance to full-on downhill casing tires. Today we're going to have a full line of Schwalbe tires mounted up to some race base wheels and we are going to go bashing into a curb. We've got our friend Sean here from Schwalbe today. We're going to ask him a few questions and talk about construction of tires across the board. Again, we're using Schwalbe tires today, but Maxxis, whether it's XO, XO Plus, Double Down, there's a lot of crossover here across the brands. So stay tuned as we deface public property while we smash them with rubber tires. What are the different casing compounds? And as a tire manufacturer, what are the main goals for each casing quickly throughout the line? Okay, so for Schwalbe, we have five different tire casings. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the fast rolling lightest weight, which is our super race casing. That's gonna be your XC race, fast rolling cross country race. Next is super ground. Super ground is meant for your standard, you know, riding bike paths that can go out on single track, but not really aggressive single track riding. Uh, when we go from super ground, we then have our super trail casing. Super trail adds a layer of apex right at the bead area, so that way it eliminates pinch flats. Uh, that technology was there for when we started doing plus sized tires and you started getting more rim strikes with the higher volume tires. Uh, next is super gravity. That is your more enduro style casing. Comes with a sidewall very similar to downhill casing, but still very supple under the tread area. And then next will be our super downhill casing, which is your super aggressive downhill, you know, putting on the big bike and smash through things as hard as you can. Can you tell us what Apex is? So Apex is essentially just a, a stiff, layer, thick layer of rubber. Um, it's a material that you'll find in pretty much any uh, gravity oriented uh, tire across the board from any brand. Um, but the apex in this tire in particular, when you feel this, you can see that it doesn't come much above the bead area, but it protects against those pinch flats and cuts that you get in the bead area and adds some rigidity to the sidewall. Okay, and then as the tire gets more aggressive, that comes higher and more protection. This kind of suppleness that you're getting up here starts to go away in favor of more protection. Exactly. So as we get to more aggressive casings like super gravity and super downhill, you'll see the apex grow in height and you'll also see number of carcass layers increase. So that sidewall becomes a lot more stiff and there's more material in there to give you much more firm uh, and puncture protected. Okay. So then theoretically, a tire that's able to conform like this on an off-camber corner, loose terrain, the stiffer the tire gets for protection, the less traction or grip it could have in, in terms of conformity to the terrain. Exactly, so you'll start to notice the tire may not conform quite as well as you go to a stiffer casing, which requires you to update your tire pressure slightly. Um, the other aspect of that is it doesn't conform vertically as well, so your dampening will can change drastically. Right. And so that's where, uh, depending on the casing you're running and the volume of your tire, you'll notice drastic changes in air pressure as well to get similar ride qualities. Would you go so far as to say your athletes are adjusting suspension settings or air pressures if they are riding one course where they're normally on super gravity and then they go to a full on downhill tire? Are they making suspension adjustments too? Yes, they're absolutely making sus suspension adjustments to adjust for that uh, rebound and suppleness. Okay, um, so there's that big of a difference for those riders. Absolutely. Okay. When it comes to bashing these into the curb, which we're gonna go do now, Yes. What do you suspect is going to happen? Am I going to get that uh, super race to hit the rim? Uh, depending on what pressure we agree to put in there, I bet super race will go to the rim and the super downhill you might get 50% through. Okay. I want to run 20 PSI. Sean says 25. <laughs> I think we compromise on 22. 22. Is that fair? Yep. Not quite halfway, but I want to go lower. So <laughs> let's go put 22 pounds of air in these tires and bash into some curbs. All right. Two things to note. First off, 22 PSI was too much. We didn't get the dynamicness I was hoping for. Uh, so we're gonna go down to 20 PSI. 
Round number one, we're gonna hit this thing with the old Thunderbird here in the super race casing. Uh, maybe we'll get lucky and touch the rim. I heard it. <laughs> you heard rim? Yeah. I, I could feel the tire like just come in and then the, the roll over. Yeah. We'll do one more for fun. You can almost see the line where the tire folded. So it's clean here and this is dirty. And you can see when the tire folded and hit the rim, it actually pushed dirt down onto the rim. So you could tell that tire fully squished and put dirt on the rim. Next up, the super ground. We increased speed to 12 miles an hour. And my first run in, I was like, Sean, are we sure we verified that tire pressure? Uh, I still felt the tire conform but it was almost like it felt the way the super race felt at 22 before we lowered it to 20. Like I felt the tire conform, but just less. And it just allowed me to roll over the curb much faster. It yeah. didn't, it didn't suck in so much before spitting me over, you know, rims are in good shape. Didn't go to rim on any of that. None of them. So, so, okay. Uh, all right, Sweet. well, let's switch up to right. super trail. So super trail is similar construction to super ground, but this has the added layer of apex right at the beat area. Okay. Uh, so slightly stiffer sidewall, but okay. you should perform very similar. Okay, now time to bash super trail. I would say it didn't feel as drastic of a change mm -hmm. as it was from the first two, from super race to super ground. But I definitely noticed it almost felt a little more like progressive Mm -hmm. in a way like it went in and then it kind of like firmed up and that's feeling that apex when you hit the curb yeah. that apex keeps the tire from deforming as it gets closer to that bead area yeah and so with the apex you'll you'll feel that um, compression firm up yeah as you get closer okay like it almost it almost made me think I either need to hit this thing faster to get it to hit rim, yep. or it also made me think like I would want to air down a, P a PSI or two to get a little more softer ride. Exactly. So now we're going to switch to super gravity. Super gravity is now going to have four layers of carcass on the sidewall okay. and two under the tread. Okay. Uh, built very similar to this, but with added layers in the sidewall. And then the apex will be nearly double the size. Okay. And so this one you should feel ramp up considerably. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. That was <laughs> crazy different. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I just went 15 and a half and pushed into the curb. Yeah. Didn't hit rim. Yep. So yeah, with the super gravity, you can see how that stiffer sidewall you suddenly have with the four layers plus the larger apex. Yeah. It really gives you the progressive feel um, hitting the curb. You can take more speed, more aggressive line uh, without risking damage to your tire. On the first run, right, just kind of coming from softer, softer, softer. Yeah. Initially a little bit more shock to my arms, mm -hmm. but the speed maintained over was quicker. And then once I kind of recalibrated for that little bit stiffer of an initial impact, I braced for it on round two and then it was just like, it felt like it took the curb from feeling this high to feeling this high, you yep. know? Like it just felt like the tire just wasn't even bothered and I just went over. Are, you know, professional level riders, are they adjusting their uh, suspension to tire casing and air pressure? And, and you're finding out absolutely yes. Yeah. Because from the initial Thunderbird that you're running, because it's going to have that conformity in the tire, you actually want to run a little bit softer suspension too, because you have to accommodate for, um, you know, to give the tire a little bit more leeway to conform and not hit rim, where yeah. now you can start running a little bit stiffer suspension. Uh, yeah. You know, like you can adjust your small bump a little bit more yeah. and, and really start to tune your suspension based on what you're feeling. Crazy. All right. Super Every DH. step's been a big difference. Uh, some bigger than others, but that, that one was cool. Now time for downhill. Super. Super downhill. Super downhill, yeah. Stiff, stiff. A, a difference again, I don't know if it was like as amazing 
as the difference between the last two transition, yep. at least in this particular scenario. Um, but once again, it felt stiffer. It felt like it deformed less. It just felt, I don't know, it just, it just took running into a curb from being like, hope I don't pinch and get a flat to like, what curb, you yeah. know what I mean? And I think too, so with the super downhill compared to super gravity, very similar sidewalls. Yeah. Um, they're both gonna have four layers of carcass in there plus the bigger apex. The major difference between the two is a super downhill, you suddenly have six layers of carcass under the tread area. Got it. And so any of that suppleness in the tread area, um, especially going in a straight line, yeah. it's, you know, you're, you're doubling the amount of sure. layers of fabric in there um, that are going to make the tire much stiffer. Uh, but also increase puncture protection. Um, and, you know, on those long downhill tracks, you want something that's going to give you that durability. Yeah. yeah. So, so this, the added benefit for this really is going to be under tread protection. Primarily, Compared yes. to super gravity, which if you think about, you know, really eroded, rutted out downhill tracks, right, is what I'm thinking yep. of, like where just so many more rocks and roots that are embedded and immovable are poking out, having that extra tread or extra material under the tread is gonna prevent those punctures from coming through that way, whereas the sidewall is relatively the same there. Exactly. And of course, with more layers uh, comes less sensitivity. So that being said, all right, we just went at 12 miles an hour on the super downhill. I used up this much suspension travel. Yeah. I want to go back to super ground. Okay. Right, that's the yep. second in the line. Second in the line. And I want to hit that curb again at 12 and I want to see if I get any difference in suspension okay. energy transmitted up. Yeah, that ring's not traveling as high, which means I'm using less suspension hitting that curb because the tire is absorbing more energy. With the more supple casing, that is basically what we would expect to see. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the sp suspension wouldn't have to do as much work, but that casing over the course of right. a long, D like say World Cup DH track, would leave you standing on the side of the trail within the first few hundred yards <laughs> if, if put through World Cup rigors. But for riding everyday casual trails, like especially what you have here in Bend, then Super yeah. Ground is a great, great casing yeah. uh, choice just for the cross country. Race. Sean, if you were a bike shop employee mm -hmm. and someone walked in, kind of how would you steer them? Uh, with anything, it's first finding out what kind of rider they are. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of rider they are, what kind of bike they ride, um, removing those parameters. And then I always tend to steer people toward the middle ground. You know, like if you're just a, a trail rider that likes to ride all terrain, you have one bike that does everything, then go after, like go to the super trail casing to start. And then from there you can dial in which side you want to go to. Um, obviously, if if they're an XC racer, we'll go to one side. If they're a downhill rider and, and solely riding bike park, we'll go to the other side. But stick with that middle ground to start with, and then from there we can dial in what you're looking for. Okay, and what about if there's a middle ground rider in, let's say, Phoenix, Arizona, or Los Angeles versus a middle ground rider in Minnesota? Again, trying to remove parameters as we ask those initial questions, it's where are you riding? And so in Phoenix, where it's really chunky, we'll up the casing uh, structure to it. If we're going to be middle ground rider in Minnesota, as an example, with smooth trails, not a lot of technical trails there, we can go to a little bit lighter weight casing, make the ride more enjoyable for the person, a little more supple casing. Okay. All right, well, there you have it, folks. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight into just how different each one of these casings conform and absorb and perform in real world scenarios. Um, we're gonna have Sean back for some more videos. We're gonna talk about tire compound selection and tread pattern selection. There are a lot of different types of tread patterns out there. You guys just released a new one, the Tacky Chan, which stay tuned for review. Holy crap, dude, by the way. We haven't, <laughs> I haven't told you that tire's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we're gonna just give you guys a little bit of insight and we would actually love for you to ask questions in this video since it's the first one in the series. Um, Help us figure out some good ways to talk about how to choose a tread pattern that's right for you. Um, open space knobs, tight space knobs, low, fast rolling. We want to know what matters to you and what questions you have when you go onto a website or a store and you're looking to buy a tire. 
uh, fuel us up with a bunch of ammo so we can answer those questions for you in the next video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more. Sean, thank you for coming yeah. by. Thank Always you. fun. See you guys in the next video.